Christmas Day. Cal's bedded down for the night. Yeah. Oh, Hank, come over here a minute, would you? Sure. Something wrong? Yeah. Cal here seems to have hurt herself. It's like a barbed wire cut. Let's have a look. Yeah, you're right. It does look like barbed wire. There's no barbed wire where this animal's been. Oh, wire like that on your property, Mr. Fuller, is over south the road. Yeah, that's right. This animal hasn't been in the south pastures for months. She's one of the animals I'm keeping up near the barn, grooming for the stock show next month. Yeah, I I know she is. You haven't let her get out accidentally, have you, Hank? Me? Well, I know, Mr. Fuller. You sure, Hank? Yes, sir. You said you want all animals you brought in off the range kept inside the wooden fences. <laughs> You're the boss. I wouldn't let any of them near any barbed wire. It's mighty funny. Can't figure out no other way she could have hurt her leg like that. Me neither. They're pretty bad, too. Deep. Yeah, it is. I'll never be able to show her with a leg like this. Sure too bad, Mr. Fuller. She's a nice animal, too. Yeah, one of the best. I was counting on her boosting my score at the show. Say, you don't suppose McCard could have done it, do you? McCard? Sure. He's pretty hard hit for good show animals this year. Had to sell off quite a few to pay his mortgage and meet the taxes. I know, but McCarg's always been a good friend of mine. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, he might. He thought it might help him at the stock show. Needs that prize money pretty bad. But McCarg's a stock raiser from way back. He couldn't hurt a prize animal if he had to. Funny thing what some men will do for money, Mr. Fuller. Look, Hank. I won't have you talking like that. Well, I was just saying that... McCarg's a good friend of mine. I've done him several favors lately. He wouldn't repay me by injuring one of my animals. Well, all I know is she couldn't have cut her leg like that around the corral. Looks to me like it was done purposely. Here, better clean out that cut and wrap it up. Yeah. Fetch me that disinfectant and some of those clean rags from the chest, Hank. Sure. Here's some right over here. Hmm? In the stall? Yeah, here on this shelf. What are they doing here? I, I don't know. This bottle's always kept in the chest at the end of the barn. Marsh, have you been treating this animal? No, I... I mean, uh, I didn't know she was hurt till you told me. Some other animal then? No, of course not. Didn't you inspect them all tonight? Yeah, I did. This is the only cow that's hurt. But what's this disinfectant and these clean rags doing here? Well, I... I just don't know, Mr. Fuller. I put that bottle away myself last week. I treated a horse. I haven't used it since. I haven't used it more than a month, I guess. Somebody did injure this animal, then tried to treat it here in its stall. He must have been frightened away before he could use the medicine. But who'd purposely cut its leg and then try to treat it? I don't know. No. Neither do I. Wait a minute. Huh? What's this? Look. Look here. What? It's a short length of barbed wire. With blood on it. I Ned, you're right. It was hidden under the straw. I just happened to pick it up with my foot. Must have been in that last load of straw we brought in. She must have laid down on it and cut her leg. Uh, not that deep. Hank, there's been dirty work around here. Here, hold these rags. Fix up this leg. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Easy now, girl. Yeah, just take it easy. You better stand back, Hank. She's about to get a little excited when... Hank. What's the idea? Don't move, Mr. Fuller. That gun. Put it away, Hank. Not on your life. Lucky for me, your foot didn't kick it up from the straw, too. You. You did this. I don't deny it. Yes, I injured the animal. I hid the barbed wire beneath the straw and this gun, too, to make it handy. Hank. And I put the disinfectant here in the stall so you'd work on the cut. And I'd have you right here where I want you. Hank, why? 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 You mean you don't know? 
I certainly don't. Because you won't give Martha what she wants. Martha? Your wife, Mrs. Fuller. Well, give her what she wants. Divorce. Divorce? Oh, stop your pretending. Why, she's never asked me for a divorce. She has a dozen times. What makes you think so? She told me. Told you. I told you to stop pretending. You know she wants to marry me. What? Don't act so amazed. <laughs> I am amazed. I'm glad to know about this. You've known about it for a long time. And I assure you that I haven't. It's no good acting that way, Mr. Fuller. You've had a lot of fun, haven't you? Letting me go on like this. Working for you for peanuts. Calling you mister. Doing all your dirty work around the farm. You've been well paid. I've never asked you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Well, I'm putting an end to all of it right now. Hey, give me that gun. Not on your life. You can't shoot me in cold blood. They'll get you. Not me. They'll never know. When they find me with a bullet in me, Hank... They'll never find a bullet in you. They'll never bother to look for one. Don't you remember this cow? Take a good look at her. You remember last fall when McCard's shotgun accidentally went off near her? How she almost trampled him to death? Hank, no. One shot, fella, through your heart. By the time that animal's hoofs have done their work... No, Marsh, no. They'll never recognize you when they pull you out of a stall. You can't do that. They'll never bother to look for a bullet. Listen to me, Hank. They'll think your gun went off accidentally and the animal will trample you to death. Give me that gun, Hank. And the farm will be Martha's and mine. Give it to me, Hank. Keep back. Give it to me. Keep back, I say. Take this. Oh! Ah! My eyes. You blinded me. Take it easy, you yellow pup. Your eyes will be all right. Water. Water, get me some water. My eyes are stinging. They'll be all right. Come on with me. I can't see. Here, this way. What are you going to do? I'm going to take you to the well and bathe your eyes. You're not going to kill me. Careful. Here's the barn door. I... I didn't know what I was doing, Mr. Fuller. Easy now. I... I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want to kill you. You only missed killing me by a hair's breadth. Oh, I was out of my head. Oh, my eyes. We'll talk about that later. Where are we? Where are you taking me? Over to the well. Mr. Fuller, what in the name of heaven are you going to do to me? I'm going to wash out your eyes. Come on now. Yes, water. Easy now. No, don't rub them. Keep your hands away from your filthy face. But I can't stand this pain. You'll be all right in a minute. I can't stand it. I tell you, I can't stand it. Marsh. Let go of me. You're taking me off to leave me someplace to die. Stop it. Stop it. Now you're trying to kill me. No, I'm not trying to kill you. You are. I know you are. Don't be a fool. I'm blind. Sure. Sure, this is your chance. Chance to get rid of me. Why, well, you're not going to do it. Hank, for the love of heaven, listen to no. me. No! I'm only taking you to the well. Throw me in, huh? You want to throw me in? I want to wash out those eyes. No! You don't care about me. All you want is a chance to do away with me. No, you rat. I'm only trying to help you. Let go, let go my arm. Let go my arm. I no, you're staying with me. I won't do it. I won't be led like an animal to the slaughter. Let go of me. Stop it. Let go of my arm. We're almost to the well now. No! Oh! Oh! My eyes. The water will fix them up. I'm not going near that well. That disinfectant will burn those eye tissues if you don't get it washed out of them. I won't. You're going to throw me in. I won't go near that well. Hank. I go. I won't go near it. I won't go near it. Hey, no! Oh! Oh! I... Now. Oh. Get up on your feet. Come over to the well and get your eyes washed out. Oh. Now keep your head. Oh, my eyes. Here now. You bend over this water trough. Come on, bend lower. Mr. Fuller. Come on now. Get oh. plenty of this cold water into your eyes. That's like it. Oh. A little more. Here, use this cloth. Soak it with water. Yeah. All right. Yeah, 
Lucky that was just a mild disinfectant. Won't bother you any. I'll put that up to your eyes. That's it. Now, you open your eyes? I don't know. Well, try. Yeah. Feel better? Uh-huh. Burn's easing up. Yeah, let's see him. Yeah. They're just inflamed a little. I'll be all right. I go into the house and bathe him in warm water now. You... You didn't have to help me. Skip it. Come on. Wait a minute. What's that noise? The New York plane. What's she so low for? I don't know. She's too low. What's wrong with her? Good Lord. She's on fire. On fire? Yes. A mass of flames. What a... Falling. Stephen. Falling. Stephen. Falling. Wake up. Falling. She exploded in midair. Now she's falling. Stephen. <laughs> Martha. Oh, heaven, Stephen, you've been having a nightmare. I've been asleep. You were screaming at the top of your lungs about something falling. The plane. Plane? The night plane to New York. What about it? She was low. Too low. She was in flames. Exploded in midair. Oh, you were dreaming. The plane did go over just as you began to scream in your sleep. Oh, let's see the clock. Yes. She goes over at the same time each night. And she was extra low tonight. The motors were awfully loud. Close. Yes. But there was no explosion. A dream. Yet so real. Oh, you'd better go back to sleep, dear. But that wasn't all of the dream. Oh, you can tell me all about it in the morning, oh, dear. Oh, that wasn't all. Stephen. Where are you going? To Hank's room. Why? No, where's that other slipper? Here. Stephen, what's wrong, dear? That's what I want to know. Stephen? Hank. Hank, open up. Hank. He's not in here. The bed's not slept in. Stephen, what in the world's wrong with you? Hank's gone. Gone? Well, he hasn't been in his bed. No. Did he tell you he was going anyplace? No. That dream. It couldn't be true. Was it... Was it about him? Yeah. About him. We were together in the prize stock barn, bedding down the animals. One of the prize cows had cut her leg. We couldn't understand it because she hadn't been near any of the pastures with barbed wire. I was bringing Hank up here to bathe his eyes. Just as the plane was flying over. She was too low. And she caught fire. There was that awful explosion. Oh, but it was all a dream. Come on, we'll see. Stephen. I'm going out to the barn. Come along if you wish. Something tells me that it was more than just a dream. <laughs> I, I tell you, it was just a dream. Here. Do you hold this lantern? Oh, but you need your sleep, dear. Get this door. I'll take it now. All right. Come on. Uh, here's the stall. You bring the flashlight? Here. Here, take the lantern. Tom found it. What's wrong? The battery burned out? Stephen. They're on her leg. A deep cut. Fresh cut. It needs attention. Martha. It's identical to the injury in my dream. Oh, Stephen, surely. It is, Martha. Oh, she just cut herself yesterday and you didn't know. No. Oh. I always examine the prize stock in their stalls every night. Martha, this animal was in perfect condition when we went to bed. Oh, but Stephen. Wait a minute. What in the world are you doing? I'm looking through this straw, but. By heavens, look! A short length of barbed wire. 
bloody barbed wire. Stephen. Just like the dream. The very same. There should be something else. Yes, here. Look. A gun. Hidden here in the straw. Here where he put it. Who? Hank Marsh, of course. Who else? Oh, no, Stephen. Yes. And look. There, on the top of the feed box. The bottle of disinfectant. Some clean rags. Oh, but Stephen, you... Just like the dream. Every bit of it is just like the dream. But you couldn't have dreamed all that. A hidden barbed wire. A cut on the cow's leg. The hidden gun, the medicine, all the same. Stephen. And this cow... She's the one that almost trampled McHarg to death last fall when his shotgun accidentally went off. But surely you don't think Henry Marsh planned to kill you. Yes, he planned it. Worked it out carefully. Very carefully. But now his plan's no good because of that dream. No, Stephen, he couldn't have. Yes. And in my dream, I saw how it was all going to work out. It was shown how I could save myself by throwing the disinfectant into his eyes. I tell you, there's some other explanation. Then a plane. It did fly over low tonight, you said? Yes. Then it must have caught on fire. It must have exploded. But it couldn't have. I didn't hear a thing except the motors. You heard me screaming about it in my dream. Yes, but you... Well, you must have been so intent upon what I was saying that you didn't hear the noise of the explosion. Oh, no, that's impossible. It was over south of the road. Here, give me that lantern. Stephen, you... You go back to the house. I'm going to look for that wreckage. Stephen? Not a sign of anything out there in the field. I called the airport. They checked the plane. It passed over Sheldon some time ago. That's miles from here toward New York. Safe? Yes. There couldn't be a mistake? No. The plane that passed over here while you were dreaming is almost in New York now. I can't understand it. All the rest of the dream was true. All but the part about the plane. No, just a dream. The other things... The injury to the cow, the wire, the gun. Didn't you say you lost your gun several months ago? Yes, yes, I did. Well, you must have dropped it in the straw when you stored it in the barn. It and the wire were thrown into the cow's stall purely by accident. But the injury... Stephen, both of us know how easily and mysteriously cows can injure their legs. And the disinfectant. Oh, you simply left it in there in the stall and forgot about it. No, I couldn't have... going to open it, Stephen? It's unlocked. Come in. Hank. Golly. Golly, I'm glad you're up, Mr. Fuller. Henry. It's late. You, you haven't been in your bed tonight. I forgot to tell you I was going to town. Now, Mr. Fuller, well, that cow in stall 13, she's cut her leg. Henry, I... Well, I just happened to look at it. Looked in, found the barn door open, and... Why? What's the matter, Mr. Fuller? Then why do you look at me like that? Stephen! You want me to come out to the barn, Hank? Why? Why, yes. That cow's leg's pretty bad. A barbed wire cut? You... You know about it? And isn't the wire lying beneath the straw of the stall right now? Mr. Fuller, I... And isn't this the gun you hid under the straw? How'd you find that? Oh, Stephen. So, it is true. You plan to kill me. No. Plan for the animal to trample me and mutilate me. No, no, no. Plan to marry Martha and get my farm. Oh, no, Stephen, no, you're wrong. No, I'm not wrong. You planned it together. Only my dreams spoiled your plans. Well, now you can be together. Stephen, no. Put that gun down. Well, I'm going to send you. You can burn together. No, Stephen, no, no, no. Seven for 
New York, now leaving at gate two, all passengers for New York, flight seven, all aboard at gate two, all aboard at gate two. All clear. All right, shut the door. Yeah, confound it. Five minutes late taking off. Why don't they get this thing into the air? I've been hiding all day, waiting for darkness. Waiting here to take this plane to New York. New York. They won't find me there. <laughs> no. They're not going to find me there. I've been waiting. Been waiting. <sighs> Good. Taking off. Yeah. I'll be in New York soon. Unfasten your safety belt now, Mr. Fuller. Huh? You know me? Yes. We always have a list of all the passengers. Let's see, um, you're going to New York. Uh, New York? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Taking a little weekend trip. Just up and left the farm for a weekend. Decided I needed a vacation. <laughs> Vacations are good for a person. Yeah. I decided I needed a little rest. So here I am. <laughs> Funny thing. I dreamed about this plane last night. Yeah. She always passes over my farm about midnight. I dreamed last night that she was flying exceptionally low. <laughs> Funny, too, because... She generally gained uh, quite a bit of altitude by the time she gets over my place. Yeah, it was a queer dream. Thought I was standing out back of my house, and she went over just a little before the barn tops, and then she caught on fire and exploded. Exploded right there in midair, right over my farm. <laughs> uh, I guess we all have funny dreams sometimes. Uh, this one was sure real. But look, there's my farm down there now. See? Had a red light put on my windmill so it could be seen at night. And look how close it seemed. How close? Too close. We're flying too low. I said we're flying too low. Look, just above the barn tops, just like the dream. Just like the dream. No, it can't be that. Look out the window. Flames. What if the motor's on fire? What if the motor's on fire? We're flying too low! Dark fantasy. You have heard The Edge of the Shadow, tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop originating in the studios of WKY. Ben Morris was heard as Stephen Fuller, Eleanor Corrin was Martha Fuller, Muir Height played Hank Marsh, and Georgiana Cook was the stewardess. Next Friday at this time, listen to the 22nd in this series of dark fantasy adventures created for you by Scott Bishop, a weird and pulse-pounding tale of terror. Carrari which relates how an angered witch doctor of the Ecuador jungle brews a bitter, deadly poison to use against a strange and heartless enemy. This program came to you from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.